so I'm happy to introduce to you the next topic. Um, so we had a picture of um, mental health interventions in young key populations in low to middle income countries. We had our principles of integration of HIV, of mental health and HIV care on a global scale. And now let's focus a little bit more locally. Let's see the status of mental health in HIV in the country. And to give us a picture, I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Rowald Alibudbud. Rowald is a diplomate of the Philippine Psychiatric Association and an assistant professorial lecturer of De La Salle University. So ladies and gentlemen, to talk about mental health and HIV in the country, roll out. Uh, thank you, Pado. Okay, so share ko lang po yung screen. So, good morning. Um, I'll just be turning off my camera to to save on bandwidth. So anyway, um, good morning. So um, let me just start with a brief um, overview of HIV in the Philippines. So uh, despite a global decline in HIV incidence and AIDS-related death, so the Philippines has witnessed a considerable increase in new cases. So the country um, between 2010 and 2017 had the most rapidly expanding HIV epidemic in the Western Pacific region, marked by a 174% surge in HIV incidence. In 2012, um, around nine new HIV cases were reported daily, whereas in 2023, there were 46 um, cases reported daily, marking a staggering 411% increase in daily incidence over the past decade. So... Um, as of January 2023, the Philippine has reported more than 110,000 HIV cases, which is seemingly low given its large population of more than 100 million. However, pervasive stigma and healthcare barriers disproportionately affect or impact uh, marginalized populations fueling the epidemic. So in 2022, key populations include um, MSM, transgender women, sex workers, um, women and girls, and people who inject the um, drugs, which, which accounted for about 92% of new HIV infections. So um, sexual transmission um, remains the primary mode of acquiring HIV in the Philippines. So information from the Philippine Department of Health um, indicates that around 70% of all reported HIV cases are among MSM, with an additional 17% in males engaged in both male and female sexual relationships. So among them, um, stigma and discrimination substantially contribute to a reduced quality of life and adverse mental health outcomes. Consequently, these factors have a detrimental effect in their engagement with HIV-related services. So um, let us situate um, stigma and discrimination among sexual minorities, such as MSM, in the framework of minority stress. So minority stress encompasses um, distal and proximal stressors. So distal stressors are objective um, um, external adversities typically faced by individuals based on their sexual minority identity, such as um, stereotypes, prejudice, and discrimination. On the other hand, uh, proximal stressors are inner personal processes that include negative perceptions and appraisals of themselves, such as internal homophobia, identity conflict. So these negative experiences and internal processes can lead to worsen uh, mental health um, disparities and outcomes among sexual minorities. So uh, minority stress can increase identity conflict leading to an elevated risk of a condomless anal sex among MSM. So this increased risk may result uh, from the isolation, um, from their isolation from their communities, limiting their access to safer sex resources. Additionally, minority stress um, can heighten mental distress and reduce self-care practices, such as condom use. So therefore, uh, minority stressors may worsen both uh, the sexual and mental health of sexual minorities, including MSM. 
So in the Philippines, minority stress among sexual minorities can stem from several sources. So the stigmas of HIV, sexual minority identity, and drug use, particularly in the context of cancer, can contribute to their hesitancy in seeking HIV treatment and testing, as well as heightened risk for mental health conditions and even security concerns. So the stigma surrounding um, HIV in the Philippines is associated with sin and immorality, leading to discrimination and denial of essential health care services. Additionally, negative societal um, attitudes and norms against sexual minority identities, especially those about their lack of legal protection, um, can force many of them to conceal their identities and HIV status, fearing prejudice from um, the larger Filipino society. So this identity concealment can also increase their risk for mental health conditions. Moreover, the stigma around drug use, especially um, crystal meth or shabu, further compounds the issue in the country. So additionally, studies have shown that these minority stressors can also increase the risk um, of, for mental health conditions, such as depression, anxiety, and stress, as well as decrease life satisfaction of Filipino sexual minorities, including MSM. In a 2018 study by Gawiren et al. Um, of uh, 417 um, people living with HIV in the Philippines, um, using the hospital anxiety and depression scale, the Filipino version. So this study found that the prevalence of anxiety, depression, and mixed diagnosis was 10.1, 3.1% and 10.8% respectively. So anxiety was correlated with female sex, unemployment, smoking, homosexual behaviors, and non-use of protective measures during intercourse. Depression was associated with unemployment non and non-disclosure of HIV status. So mixed diagnosis was correlated with unemployment, smoking, homosexual behaviors, and non-use of protective measures during intercourse. So they concluded that the that there is a need to allocate resources for screening mental health problems in HIV pay, um in HIV cases in the Philippines. So basically, um, addressing minority um stress experienced by people living with HIV and those at higher risk for HIV is crucial um to mitigate the ever-increasing burden of HIV in the Philippines and its mental health consequences. So what can we do about it or what can be done about it? So um, stigma remains. So first would be um, comprehensive public um, health education. So basically stigma remains a significant barrier um, for health seeking for HIV-related concerns in the Philippines. So among MSM in the Philippines, HIV stigma um, is rooted in arguments related to morality and religion. So um, where HIV and homosexual behaviors can be perceived as dirtiness and a sin. So therefore, developing and implementing um, nationwide public health campaigns is crucial um, to address the increasing incidence of HIV in the Philippines. And this should, these campaigns um, should go beyond um, conventional measures and strategies to include um, targeted efforts to debunk um, prevailing myths and misconceptions and can extend to um, um, new and social media um, networking strategies to improve um, condom promotion and distribution as well as um, confidential HIV testing. So integrating mental health components into existing public health education programs is equally essential. For instance, um, um, strengthening peer support groups is promising in improving viral suppression, antiretroviral uh, therapy adherence, mental health, and quality of life among people living with HIV. So next would be accessible and inclusive healthcare services. So increasing accessibility to HIV testing and treatment services is a fundamental step in combating the epidemic. So the Philippines HIV and AIDS Policy Act of 2018 enhanced HIV service accessibility, um, where HIV testing was expanded to include community-based um, screening, self-testing, and the screening of minors age um, 15 to 17 without their parents' con uh, consent. 
So moving forward with this improvement, a step forward can include integrating mental health screening and support services within existing um, healthcare services. So this approach would allow um, increased inclusivity um, and cultural sensitivity, acknowledging the intersectionality of HIV and mental health issues and treatment gaps. Um, another thing that could be improved in the Philippines would be policies. So advocacy for the passage and implementation of anti-discrimination laws is pivotal to protecting the rights of individuals based on their sexual orientation and HIV status. So in the Philippines, the sexual orientation and gender identity uh, expression or SOGI Equality Bill has been pending for over two decades in the Philippine Senate. Um, SOGI-based anti-discrimination policies remain sparse and at times um, poorly implemented in select localities within the countries. So therefore, legal reforms are necessary and should extend beyond anti-discrimination measures to actively promote inclusive mental uh, health care practices. So these practices can encompass um, inclusive education, services, and services about sex, um, sexual diversity, gender diversity, bullying, suicide prevention, and gender affirming care. So another thing that can be done could be to increase mental health support programs. So um, the services may, shel um, um, may provide shelter from, from societal stigma attached to HIV, sexual minority identity, and mental health conditions while addressing their mental health and HIV-related um, concerns if um, if we can promote um, um, a more uh, anonymized and supportive environment in the um, in society. So, and another thing could be community-based outreach and empowerment programs. So, empowering um, community leaders and organization plays a pivotal role in creating an environment conducive to open discussions about HIV and mental health. So usually in the Philippines, uh, there are already community-led initiatives and empowerment efforts, um, such as Love Yourself, um, Youth for Mental Health. So could, these efforts can be replicated to provide HIV care and testing and support services to key populations. So com promoting community-led initiatives is usually crucial in reducing stigma within the local context and improving HIV service and testing accessibility, fostering a more supportive and responsive social and healthcare environment for individuals affected by HIV and mental health issues. Um, another thing um, that was also mentioned by Ives would be um, the limited number of healthcare workers, such as nurses and physicians in the Philippines. For instance, in my field, uh, men mental health um, professionals are limited within the country with only about um, 4,200 registered guidance counselors, uh, 1,600 registered psychologists, and about 500 psychiatrists for the country's 110 million um, population. Therefore, providing sensitization and training for healthcare professionals and um, community-based workers is essential to enhance their understanding of the intersectionality of HIV and mental health. So the focus should be also be on cultural competence and inclusivity, ensuring that healthcare workers are equipped to address the diverse needs of individuals from different backgrounds. So including mental health components in the training of HIV um, service providers, such as mental health screening and treatment, can help ensure that a holistic approach is given to patients. So another thing would be, I think this was also mentioned by Ives, research and data collection. So um, at present, mental health and HIV um, research, especially among key populations affected by HIV, remains limited. So between 1996 and 2022, it was revealed by that CIMAGO, an uh, indexing services and aggregation of scopus, uh, an aggregator of scopus, only noted about um, 431 publications from that whole time span um, published within the psychiatry and mental health category emanating from the Philippines. Similarly, a review by Restore et al. 
um, revealed that most HIV studies were conducted among female sex workers. Well, a few studies reported data from MSM, despite um, being one of the largest key populations. So likewise, the review showed that there were no studies reported on transgender populations. So therefore, providing a specific focus on marginalized key populations to identify the no one's challenges is necessary. So in doing so, research findings can inform evidence-based interventions and policies crucial for tailoring our healthcare strategies to address the unique mental health needs of those affected by HIV. And another thing is, and lastly, international collaboration. So in the Philippines, international organizations such as the WHO and UNAIDS have supported the country in targeting, um, in setting targets, indicators, and services and policies for improving its its HIV related services. So therefore, um, collaborating with international and non governmental organizations can be beneficial for leverage, uh, leveraging resources and sharing best practices. So overall, um. I think uh, a holistic and multidimensional approach is to addressing the challenges of HIV and mental health in the Philippines is necessary. So, thank you.